It is sometimes said that while God made the world, the Dutch made the Netherlands themselves. It's certain that but for a thousand years of dike building, of fighting the North Sea for land and for life, wide areas of the Netherlands would still be under the sea. And in this country, the sea is not easily forgotten. To be safe from it, the old towns were built upon timber piles. The city foundations hedge the canals and rivers that carry off the water to the sea. Today, new suburbs and apartment blocks surround these old communities. Half the buildings now standing in the Netherlands have gone up in the past 40 years. And so there has come into being an area called the City of Holland, a concentration of towns grouped between Amsterdam and The Hague and on through Rotterdam to Dordrecht, one-sixth of all the Netherlands. Here live six million of the 10 million population people buying and building, living and working below the high water mark of the North Sea. streamlined water bus still uses the old canals lined with houses made famous throughout the world by the magnificent paintings of the Dutch masters. The canal bank remains a playground, and a picture of Holland without children is still as improbable now as it was then. It is for these new generations, for a population that is increasing faster than any other in Europe, that so many new homes are being built. But even if there were room ashore, some prefer to live not by the water, but upon it in snug, independent houseboats. As neighbors, they have the families that live on canal barges and coastal craft, plying the waterways that shape this land. The 11 provinces of the Netherlands are grouped around three of Europe's major rivers. The Rhine, the Maas, and the Scheldt, linking the country with its neighbors in Belgium and Germany. Within the Atlantic community, the Netherlands holds a unique position across the entrance to northeastern Europe. Along a narrow 50-mile strip of coast, these great rivers pass through the wharves and docks of Dutch ports to meet the sea. From Germany and France, Belgium and Switzerland, the giant river barges come down to Amsterdam and Rotterdam to transfer their cargoes to ocean-going ships and receive in turn new cargoes for Baal and Strasbourg, Liège, Maastricht or Cologne.
Much of the sea-going trade is carried in Dutch ships, the third merchant fleet of Europe and still growing. freighter a month is the rhythm of the smaller yards. Also kept busy building and repairing trawlers and drifters for the fishing industry. But the bigger ships are being built too, mostly for sale to other nations. In Europe, only Britain and Germany put more new ships upon the sea each year. This is the business of earning a nation's living. But some of the yards are busy with defense orders too. Brand new cruisers have been added to the fleet that secures some of the most crowded waters in the world. And the Royal Netherlands Navy also supports amphibious marine forces that can move rapidly along rivers and coastline to reinforce any of the five regular land divisions. Dutch spend almost 10% of their national budget on defense, as well as producing specialized equipment for other NATO forces. Long-range binoculars are designed and constructed in Delft, where the telescope was invented. Much of this skilled work is done in the same houses where the industry began more than 400 years ago. by Leiden was devised the first microscope, developed over centuries of practice and perfection into the latest large screen electronic models. Although sent all over the world, this equipment gets first use at home, in the health centers and hospitals that are the pride of Holland's highly developed system of social services. In this factory clinic, the worker is examined under the machine he himself builds in a neighboring workshop. One-tenth of all Dutch exports are sent out from this single radio and electrical center at Eindhoven. It employs local craftsmen as well as Belgians who come to work each day from across the border. Associated with Belgians and Luxembourgers in the Benelux Union, the Dutch see this idea of economic cooperation as the model for an Atlantic community in which trade and travel should be freed of national restrictions. Planning for the future is implicit in most of Dutch life. Applied to youth, it means thorough training for the job, even to showing a boy minor how as a man he may best enjoy his leisure. young pit workers get most of their instruction in the mines themselves. Mines that have been worked since the 12th century and yet are the most modern in Europe. Here production costs are lower than in any of the six countries of the coal and steel community. Netherlands coal is now more than heat and light. Coking releases a range of chemical byproducts on which have been founded completely new industries. 
fertilizers for farms, paints for those trim interiors, and nylon fibers to dress the modern woman. Established almost entirely since the war, this wide range of new light industries has solved the twin problem of finding thousands of new jobs and producing for export. But many of these new consumer goods stay at home. They sell within the Netherlands because more people are demanding more goods. One and a half million more people than in 1938, and still another two million expected by 1970. This in the country that is already the most densely populated in Europe and probably in the world. People, three times more to the square mile than in the state of New York people competing for jobs and homes and goods, but almost always with the family and family life as the basic pattern of their effort. At holiday time, the people and the sea call a truce. But the Dutch are not deceived. One man against the sea is a poor thing. And only through unity have the Dutch been able to build their land. This nation has achieved unity in preservation of the present and fully intends to realize the promise of its future. The focal point of this nation's family unity is a queen, Queen Juliana of the Netherlands, at home on the occasion of the royal birthday, at home with her family to a nation of families, meeting her people with an absence of formality that many a chief of state might envy. But formality can be assumed too when occasion warrants. The occasion is the royal opening of parliament, a parliament distinguished by its magnificent record of concern for the good of the nation, with politics a rather bad second. In the herinnering for het leven als het jaar van de watersnood, die zo veel leed bracht. Politics do not even enter the nation's key social and economic council. A dull committee room, certainly an unusual one, where 30 members of trade unions meet with 30 of the country's leading employers and 30 representatives of the crown to discuss and decide what manner of nation the Netherlands shall be five, ten and twenty years hence. Where to build the factories and what kind of factories to build? How many houses and what kind? Where to offer homes and jobs to the 60,000 more workers that ask to share the nation's wealth each year? by building factories and homes can the nation's wealth be increased. But building takes land, and most of the land is already under cultivation. Build over a farm, and the nation loses food at a time when the number of mouths to be fed is increasing. And the farms are precious, for they yield far above the average of European farms. They feed the people and sell a rich surplus to other nations.
Of this agriculture, the richest and the best known is dairy farming. High quality milk and full cream butter, much of it for sale abroad. Dutch cheeses, Edam and Houdse, made by modern methods but in some places still marketed by porters who wear the uniforms of their ancient guilds. To yield still more, some of the farms have vanished under glass. Intensive cultivation of out-of-season crops for the European markets. fruits, vegetables and flowers, valuable enough to justify air transport to bring them to the housewives of Germany and Britain, Scandinavia, France and Belgium within hours of being gathered. The Netherlands plays a full part in the economic life of the Atlantic community. Of that alliance, she is both a symbol and a promise. From her long struggle with the sea, she has learnt the value of unity in facing a common danger and marked the progress that can be achieved in peace. And this progress she must continue. The acres of wheat land that once were the bottom of the sea are now not enough to feed the new generations. The fortified island has become a sleepy country hillock and high water mark is far inland. And so the sea is being sounded again. For more land is needed, and only from the sea can it be taken. Given time, given peace, these people will continue their never-ending task of making the Netherlands. <laughs> 